Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, depending on where you are in the world. This is Gloria White, and I'm coming to you from Utah, USA. Today, I will be continuing in the book of Matthew in the New Testament in the King James Version of the Holy Bible, and I am doing an in-depth study in chapter 24. And um, so, I finished up and verse 15 in chapter 24 and it should have included verse 16 so before I get into verse 17 I'm going to reread 15 and 16 verse 15 when ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place whoso readeth let him understand. Verse 16. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. So when Satan seats himself in the third temple, showing himself to be God to himself, then it's time to get out of Judea, run to the mountains. And in verse 17, it says, Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. You don't have time. You have to just run out of the, into the mountains. Verse 18, Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. Just run to the mountains. And verse 19, And woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. Now this reference is Luke 23, 29. And I have tried for time's sake to um, mark these verses with bookmarks here. Luke 20. I cannot see without this magnifying glass. All right, verse 19, Luke 23, 29. Here we go. And verse 29, I'll read 28 with it. But Jesus, turning unto them, said, Daughters of Jerusalem, weep not for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming, in the which they shall say, Blessed are the barren, and the wombs that never bear, and the paps which never gave suck. And then we will go back to Luke, I mean to Matthew 20. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. Why the Sabbath day? Because you're supposed to rest on the Sabbath day. Some believe that Jesus is our rest, and that is true, but the Sabbath day has not changed. And then, um, let's see. And then, let it be not in the winter. Why? Because in Jerusalem... In Judea, in the winter, it's wet. That's a rainy season, and it's cold, and that you would have to try to run away through the mud and the muck and to get into the mountains for safety. And then we want to go to verse 21. For then shall great tribulation... For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time. No, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. So now if we look at verse 21 when it says, then shall be tr great tribulation. The reference on that is Dan, Daniel 9.26.
So I mark this as well. Let's see. Uh, I have so many bookmarks in here. I tried to do this to save a little time. 926. Nope. Yep, 926. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and in thereof shall be with a flood, and unto the end of the war desolations are determined. So, the abomination of desolation, he is the desolator, and that is Satan. So, here, and after three score and two weeks shall Messiah... This is an unfulfilled prophecy. Be cut off. Or in that, that translates into suffer the death penalty. But not for himself. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. And the end thereof shall be with a flood. And unto the end of the war desolations are determined and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week it's going to make peace and in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease and for this overspreading of abominations he shall make it desolate even unto the consummation and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate Ooh. it's not going to be good for him, but it'll be good for us. Now, back in Matthew chapter 20, uh, verse 22, and except those days sh should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elects or the chosen's sake, those days shall be shortened. And that we can refer to in Isaiah 65, verses 8 and 9. Uh, chapter, chapter 65, verse 8 and 9. Thus saith the Lord, as the new wine is found in the cluster, and one saith, destroy it not, for a blessing is in it. So will I do for my servants' sake, that I may not destroy them all. And I will bring forth a seed out of Jacob, and out of Judah an inheritor of my mountains, and mine elect shall inherit it, and my servants shall dwell there. He's telling us, He's going to be triumphant. He's going to defeat the desolator. He's going to grind him into dust. Now, verse 23. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. And that can be referenced in Luke Chapter 17, verse 23. Chapter 17, verse 23. And they shall say to you, See here, or see there, go not after them, nor follow them. For as the lightning that lighteth out of the one part under heaven, shineth unto the other part of under heaven, so shall the Son of Man be in his day. And then back here in verse 24. For there shall arise false Christ, 
and false prophets. Just as it, there weren't false Christ in the Old Testament, but there were a lot of false prophets and lying prophets and shall show great signs and wonders insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Let me read that again. For there shall arise false Christ and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Now we can find these referenced in Second Thessalonians 2.9. So, here in 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 9. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness and unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, nor they might, that they may, might be saved. For this cause, God shall send strong delusion that they should believe a lie. And then just can't see without this magnifying glass. I need one of those things that holds the glass like that. Like if you were working on a craft that was had really small detail, huh? And then it so that would that would have been the reference for there shall arise uh, false Christ and fa false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders. So that was Second Thessalonians two nine, and now the part that says if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect, and we can find that in Second Timothy two nineteen. So 2 Timothy 2, verse 19. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Now, what does this mean? Turn from your sins. Turn back to him. Turn away from sin. Sin is death. Verse 25. Behold, I have told you before. Remember, he told us, he said, I told you all things. 26. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert. Go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers of the inner rooms. Believe it not. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Verse 28. For wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. And that can be found in Luke 17, 30, I mean, 24, 17, verse 24. For as the lightning that shineth out of the one part under heaven, shineth unto the other part under heaven, so shall also the Son of Man be in his day. So, and will be changed in the twinkling of an eye. Now, where were we? 27, we're in verse 28. For wheresoever the carcass is, the, the, wait, I think we just did that. There, okay, verse 29. 
immediately, immediately, not sometime after, but immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Now we can find that in um, Daniel 7.11 and the other part in Ezekiel 32.17. So to complete this entire verse, we need to go to Daniel 7, 11, and then Ezekiel 32, 7. Oops. Okay, so in verse 28, I mean 29, it says, immediately after the tribulation of those days. So that is Daniel 7, 11, and it says, I beheld then because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake. I beheld even till the beast was slain and his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. And then... It says in verse 29 in Matthew 24 to continue, Shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And we're going to refer to Ezekiel 32, 7. Okay, and then we can follow that up in Ezekiel 32, verse 7. And when I shall put thee out, or out, or the land, wait, nope, put out thy light. Oops, sorry, we'll tilt it there. Um, verse 7. And when I shall put thee out, or put out thy light, I will cover the heaven, and make the stars thereof dark. I will cover the sun with a cloud, and the moon shall not give her light. And all the bright lights of heaven will I make dark over thee, and set darkness upon thy land, saith the Lord God. When we go back to Matthew 24, and we are in verse 30. And this is an unfulfilled, sorry, this is an unfulfilled prophecy that says, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Now let's break that down. The um, In verse 30 it says, And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And we can find that in Daniel chapter 7, verse 13 and 14. Mm -hmm. He made everything with the breath of his word. Sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah to the Lord. Seven. Boy, if I could remember for one second, from one second to the next, Daniel 7.11. Down here at the bottom of the page. Oh, sorry, we're tilting. I beheld then because of the voice or the sound of the pompous words, of the great words which the horn spake, I beheld even till the beast was slain and his body 
and his body, destroyed and given to the burning flame. God is going to turn Satan to dust. He's going to burn him from the inside out. As concerning the rest of the beast, they had their dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and a time. I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. And there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away, and his kingdom that shall not be destroyed. Praise the Lord. Ooh, praise the Lord. So now, if we look at... um. Shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. We can go to Zach, Ezekiel, Zeke, Zechariah 12, 12. Oops, so sorry. And in Zechariah 12, 12, it says, and the land shall mourn every family apart. Apart means um, by itself. The family of the house of David apart and their wives apart. The family of the house of Nathan apart and their wives apart. And then we can look at Revelation 1.7. And then 14, 14. Okay, so in Revelation chapter 1, verse 7, it says, Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him. And all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. And then we're going to uh, Revelation 14, 14. Sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah to the Lord. Okay, Revelation 14, 14. And I looked, and behold, a white cloud. And upon the cloud one sat like the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, Thrust in thy sickle, and reap, for the time is come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. And he that sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. And another angel came out of the temple which is in heaven, he also having a sharp sickle. And another angel came out from the altar, which had power over fire, and cried with a loud cry to him that had the sharp sickle, saying, Thrust in thy sharp sickle, and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth, for her grapes are fully ripe. And the angel thrust in his sickle into the earth and gathered the vine of the earth and cast it into the great winepress of the wrath of God. And the winepress was trodden without the city and blood came out of the winepress even unto the horse bridles by the space of a thousand and six hundred furlongs. 969,600 feet. Our Lord will take us out of the earth before the sharp sickle comes in with the 
for the grapes of wrath that he will be putting in the wine press. And then if we look um, okay, that was um, verse 30. And then uh, verse 31, and he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. And we can find that is referenced in 1 Corinthians verse 15, uh, chapter 15, verse 52. Oh my goodness, our God is so good. Okay, here in 1 Corinthians verse 15, no, chapter 15, verse 52, and, I, and I'm going to read um, quite a few verses here, but you're going to love it. Okay. All right. Behold. I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, or trumpet, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is, is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen, amen, amen. Oh, our God is so good. Oh, oh, come, Lord Jesus, come. Oh. Ooh, I'm telling you. Ooh. And then in verse 31 it says, And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect, his chosen ones, from the four winds and from one end of heaven to the other. And we can see that referenced in... 1 Corinthians 15, 52, which is what we just saw. And, oh, I'm going to end there. That is so powerful. Oh, that is so powerful. That is like, oh, man. I mean, guys, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 52, and and I read more than than just that one verse. But, oh, if you want to be lifted up, start reading chapter 15 in 1 Corinthians at verse 52 and read to 57. I'm going to read it again. It was so good. Oh, my goodness. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump or trumpet, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corrupt corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us 
the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Oh, guys, he loves us so much. Oh, my goodness. Just think, all the bad things and all the evil things in the world now that are rising up and in the middle of the daylight instead of hiding in the shadows in the dark. It's just in your face. Don't worry. Don't lose hope. Hang on, guys, because... That's what's coming. Oh my goodness, he's going to grind them in the wine press. They will be destroyed. Our God is a consuming fire and he will consume them. And oh, 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 oh our God is a fire. God is a consuming fire, and oh, 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 we are going to be whisked out of here, changed into incorruptible immortality, and live forever. Oh. And to worship at his feet, at his precious, precious feet. Who, guys, hang in there. No matter what comes, don't let anything steal your joy. And don't let anything take your hope. Because he is our hope. He is our salvation. He is our rock. Build your house on the rock. Your foundation should be the rock because nothing in this world can shake you then. Oh, it may come around and rumble and tumble and make awful sounds and it might even scare you. <laughs> oh, but just hang in because in the end we win. Oh, death! Where is thy victory? You fail! You fail! Our Lord has conquered. Oh, he has paid the ultimate price for our salvation. Don't waste it. You know, and as always, I love you.